Tumani Diagaraga. How's it going? Very good. How about you? Yeah, it's okay. What have you been on with during uh, quarantine? Ooh, trying to stay fit, helping the kids with their homework and all that sort of stuff. Any any topics you're excelling at? Maths. That's the only topic I, I'm any good at. Okay. Anything else, I let the missus handle it. Right. Well, we'll uh, we'll get into your your career. Um, you're French. Yeah. I'm from a suburb in Paris. What was your early footballing days like? Was it on the streets or what? Yeah, it was on the street. I didn't sign for the team until I was 11. It was after France won the World Cup right. in 98, which was in France. You were 11 at that time, were you, 98? Yeah. What was that like, having that French team? Because that was a team, wasn't it, that? Oh, that was a great team. And just the whole country, and obviously they won it that year. So after that, me and all my mates were like, oh, we need to go and sign up for the team. Because we didn't have any interest in signing up for the team at that time. We was just happy playing with each other on the street. But then seeing that made everyone want to be a footballer. Were there any um, big influences to you in that team? Uh, well, Zidane was the main man at the time. But just the whole team, the whole atmosphere around the country... It was one, one thing where I think everyone in France at that time wanted to play football. So when, when you were playing on the streets, were you sort of a standout one? or? Yeah, I'd like to think so. I was always one of the better ones. I used to play with like my older uncles and when they'll have the game, they'll call me over to play with them as well. It was more just enjoying playing, really. So when you uh, when you decided to have a go at playing on pitches and stuff, what happened? What was your first bit of success? Yeah, I got picked up by Brettany when I was 13, which at under-13 level, they really good in France and in Paris. So I got picked up by them, which was a good thing. But then I got involved in a... I got run over by a car a year after, which kind of stopped everything. You got run over by a car? Yeah. Just not paying attention, running across the road, and a car came, and that was it, really. You you just crossing the street? Yeah. So what injuries come of that? I broke my shoulder. I don't know if you've ever seen, I've got like a massive scar on my left shoulder. I've always had problems with my left shoulder, but it's one of them things I'm just used to, you know. Yeah. So do you remember much about the incident? No. I just remember just being in hospital. This happened not too fast. How long was it before you got back into playing footy after that? Well, probably say about six months, maybe. And then, but you got back in with the academy, did you? That you were in? No, no. Then I signed for a team that was round the corner from my house called Every. I was there for a year before I came to England. Yeah, did you come to England for football? Yeah, it was for football. Watford had a trial game in Paris. So they had an agent who was rounding up the best players that he thought were around in Paris. We ended up having a game in the Watford Academy, director and everything. They all came down like to France to watch the game and after that they told me to come here for a month on trial. Wow. And was that like an easy thing for you just to go to England? In some ways, I think the language barrier was difficult. Like coming to another country at 16 and you can't speak any word of English that was quite hard but my desire to be a professional footballer was greater so it was one thing that I wanted to do Did you come across with your mum or your dad or no I'm by myself just how old were you at this stage 16 right so you're 16 and you just was that a big thing for you at the time to just jump on a plane or yeah it was a big thing but like I said it was all about I wanted to be a professional footballer so I would have gone anywhere for the chance to be a professional footballer. So you never found that it held you back a little bit that you grew up playing on the streets, playing that type of football? Did you never feel like that hindered you? No, no, I don't think so. I think it was more one of them things where you just had to come in, had to adjust to the way they wanted me to play and had to play. But I think at that age, at 16, they seen the potential more than... Anything else? So you come across for your trial at Watford. How did that go? Did it go according to plan or did you have any wobbles during that or what? No, it went according to plan. 
So then I had to go back home and they said they were going to ring me again in another two weeks. So I thought, oh, they, that was probably a no, but they didn't want to say it. That's what I thought in my head. But then two weeks later, they called me back. I went back to Watford, played against Arsenal and Tottenham under 18s. And then after that, they offered me a deal. And that was it? You moved over? Yeah. So it was a normal scholarship, a little bit like what we still have now? Yeah, I signed a scholarship. I think it was November 2004. My goal was just to try and sign a professional contract and play in the first team. How was the language barrier? Did you learn English fairly quick? Yeah, well, we had four French players at the club at the time. So they got us a French teacher that was coming twice a week to the stadium. So we would have English lessons twice a week, which helped us last speak in English faster. I did sign pro till in August 2005, I think it was around that time that was straight into the first team was it really yeah I would train with the first team and play in the reserves I felt very comfortable and the older players were not very good there was a couple of us young players training with them and they were looking after us so it was it was good it was a good development you stayed there for quite a while didn't you you got into the first team yeah played a few games for the first team really enjoyed it to be honest I think when Ray Lewington was the manager, he really wanted to give young players a chance to get into the first team. So I've got nothing bad to say about Watford, really. It was a very good club. And obviously they gave me the chance to come to England and like, live my dream. What year was it? They went up to the Prem, didn't they? I think it was 2007. Right, so you were part of it for that. Yeah, I was in a squad for the final. I was at the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. I can Leeds. But yeah, I was in and around the team. I was travelling every week. I think I made one or two appearances that year, but it was more, I was more travelling and being in and around the team. I didn't actually play a lot. I didn't really play at all, really. It must still have been a really good experience getting promoted to the Prem. Yeah, I think it was good just to see the feeling and the joy in everyone's faces after getting promoted. You know, that was a very good experience for me. At a young age to be in and around the team and seeing what it's like. Massive day. And I think there was, it was 3-0. So it was pretty straightforward in all fairness. Like from the get-go, I knew who was going to win. Was it uh, was it A.D. Brothroyd? Yeah, A.D. Brothroyd was the manager. I think at the time at Watford, he had a more direct style of play, which probably didn't really suit me a lot. Which is why I went on loan to Aerosmith and various places. But he'd done a really good job at Watford. Like he was very effective in his way of playing and he shows that the team got promoted. Right. Well, we'll uh, we'll take some questions now, shall we? Um, yeah. We'll go for Twitter first. Okay, this is from Andrew Berry. Who out of the current squad has the ability to play at a higher level? Apart from yourself, obviously. What advice would you give to them? I think Sam, uh, Adam, Carlos. I think a lot of the younger players in the squad who are playing regularly at the moment, I think they've got a very good chance and I think they will play a higher level. I think it's, it's all about keeping your feet on the ground and making the right decision. Going somewhere where you've got more chance of playing instead of going for the bigger club. To be playing 23, so that's not what you want. You want to keep playing first in football. No, very good. We've got one here from Samuel Sutton. Uh, who's the best player you've played with and against? Against is easy. That'd be JJ Okocha. I played against him when I was at Watford. He was at Bolton. I remember growing up, seeing him play for SC and playing against him. It was unbelievable. I've never seen any, anyone like it. We've... That's a tough one. He'll have to be... Because I won't count Watford because I didn't play that many games. So I'll probably say James Tarkovsky or Alex Pritchard. I'll have to be one of them too. Okay. Um, we've got one here from Paul Carter. Did you car share with anyone? I'm not sure what uh, what period he's talking about there. Maybe the current one at Morecambe? I don't know. No, I'm not car sharing with anyone at the moment, which I'd like to. But when I was at Swindon, me and Kane Woolery, 
but car sharing for a little bit. We used in the same block of apartments, so we used to car share for a bit. Yeah, um, you you travel over from Yorkshire, don't you, over the 65? Yeah. That must be a drive to do every day, that tombs. It is, but considering the clubs I've been at, you know, I've been a lot further from home. So even though it's a bit of a drive, I don't mind it. What do you do in the car? Do you, do you have the radio, do you have music or podcasts or what? Podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. Any good podcasts for the people? I always listen to the Joe Biden podcast or there's another one called The Brilliant Idiots and that's the two I listen to on a regular basis. Right, well, uh, we'll get back to these. This is Dill Buckle. What made you choose Morecambe? The, uh, the manager and the location. You know, I wanted to come back closer to my family and obviously knowing the manager, it was a no-brainer for me. I'd rather to come and work with someone that I already knew. I think it was the best choice I could have made instead of going somewhere where you don't really know the manager and being far away from home. I'm at a stage now where I'd rather be closer to my family. So if I can do that and work with a manager that I know, it's a no-brainer. Uh, we've got one here from Michael59229018. <laughs> What's it like being the best footballer in the North? Huh. I don't think I'm the best footballer in the North, but... I'm enjoying my football, I can say that. Okay. I'm happy to be back up north and I'm enjoying my football at the moment. Uh, one from Elliot Young here. Can you come back to Brentford? Hopefully I will one day. I don't think it'd be a, as a player, but it's a club that I love a lot and everyone knows that. So if I can go back there one day, of course I will. Uh, we've got one, Joe, JCBFC19. Do you miss Brentford like we all miss you? I surely do. You know, I always look out for their results and, you know, I'm sure that, I know they've got a very good chance this year to go up with their new stadium coming up, so I think it'd be a great timing for them. Hopefully they can do it. And the last one on Twitter, this one's from Economics Teacher. Do you dislike being called Big Dave? Would you prefer if they refer to you as Tombs? I would prefer Tombs, but I've got no problem with Big Dave. That's followed me ever since I was at Aeroford, which was in 2008. So I don't mind it. Ideally, I'd prefer to be called Tombs, but it's followed me for that long now that I don't really mind. Yeah, sometimes you don't get to choose your own nickname, do you? Yeah, exactly. What, what is it, Big Dave? Where's that come from? Do you know? It started when I was at Hereford, when I went on loan to Hereford from Watford. And it's kind of big there, big there, it's followed me ever since. I think it's probably because of my surname. Tombs is better, but I don't mind either way, really. Right, well, we'll back, get back onto your, your career. So you've you've been at Watford and the style of play wasn't really suiting you, so you went on loan. Yeah, my first ever loan was Swindon. That's about where you could go on loan at any time. So I think it was in March or something like that. There was 10 games left. So I went to Swindon, then I went to Rotherham the year after, but the best one in was probably Hereford. Talk to us about your time there then. You know Aaron Wildig's a big Hereford fan. Yeah, I know. He told me the first day I signed for Morecambe, he said, oh, I used to watch you play at Hereford. Made me feel a bit old, but yeah, but yeah Hereford was extremely good. I think that's where I became a man, really. You know, I was playing regularly, like league football, we got promoted the first year I was there and I really, really enjoyed it. Like up till this day I still love the time in the club. How long were you there for? I was there for two seasons. I was signed permanently after we got promoted from League Two to League One. The manager now is Josh Garlin, who I used to play with and I think they they'd be working their way back up and I'm sure it's only a matter of time until they come back in the league. How did you time there? come to an end we got relegated from league one the second year and peter bro had a few bids so then erford accepted a bid from peter bro and i ended up going to peter bro got promoted to the championship at the time was that the first time someone had paid a fee for you yeah what was that like uh it was nice to be wanted you know i've never paid attention to what the fees how much do they pay because it's got nothing to do with me really but 
it was nice to know that the hard work kind of pays off and there's always someone well to have someone willing to pay money for you to go to their club is flattering did you feel pressure though yeah but i feel pressure regardless where i go if, it, if there's a fee or if it's a free transfer you play in front of thousands of people you have to try and deliver every time so i've always had pressure whenever i played really how did it go there at peterborough very good the first six months i was playing every week with dan ferguson but then he left and the new manager came in the new manager didn't fancy me so i ended up going on loan to brentford which turned out to be a really good thing in the end looking back in my career but yeah it's just change of manager did you ever have conversations with him about why you weren't getting in or i, I did i think he just he wanted me to be more aggressive, I think he was at the time. Mm. I think that was his reasons for it. Right, so you got your move to Brentford? Yeah. Which also went pretty well. Yeah, I was there on loan till the end of the season. I went in January and then ended up signing and I was there for six years, which I really enjoyed my time there. They have a... A strange recruitment scheme, don't they? That's sort of a money ball statistic based thing, don't they? Yeah. I mean, that only started, it was started probably a year, two years before I left. Okay. But yeah, when I first went there, it wasn't like that. But they've always been quite forward, forward thinking with football. And it seems to be working for them. They took a lot of us, you know, called Ryan Williams. Free kick tanker. Yeah, that's him. Do you remember? I remember him. We had a free kick specialist at the club at the time. And I remember him because he was very good at free kicks. I don't think he played much, but he was very good at taking free kicks. I remember that. But uh, anyway, so you're at Brentford. Uh, did you have any promotions or anything with them? Yeah. We've got, well, we lost the playoff final. Then we got promoted to the championship the year after. And then lost the you know, championship playoffs that year. The last three, four years were really... We was always at the top of the table playing for something, whether it was playoffs or promotions. We've had a lot of roller coasters, let's say. A lot of emotions, but it was a very good time. And obviously the promotion from League One to the Championship, that was one of the highlights of my career. What age are you at this stage? I must have been, I don't know, maybe 25 maybe. Had, you, had any of your family come over from France? or? Yeah, they've come watch a few games, but I was still living here by myself and obviously I had kids by that time but yeah but they've seen me play a few times Was it never on the cards for you to go back to France? No and I don't think I would have took it if I'm honest the English league is the biggest league in the world it has been for the last 10 years so everyone who plays in France they want to come here they want to come to England and play so I'd be crazy to try and do the other way been here and leaving to go back to France. What's the standard like though? Because I mean, at that time especially, you must have been able to go back to France and play at the highest level, no? I've never had the opportunity, but I think the standard is very good. I think it's, it was different type of play. I think they're very good technically. It's a lot slower. It's a lot more technical based. But I never had the opportunity, and like I said, I don't. I don't think I would have took it unless it was PSG. Okay. At Brentford, you started going on loan, didn't you? You went to Portsmouth. How how did it start happening that you were going out on loan? Because you were having a good time at Brentford. Yeah, well, once again, I've got a new manager's cast. Mark Warburton took over, and he didn't really fancy me at first. So he told me that it'd be better for me to just go on loan. And Portsmouth wanted me to go there, so it was like, you're better off going to Portsmouth for a, lo- for a month, play some games, and then like, see how it goes. So I went there for a month, extended it to the end of the season. But then, I think it was two, three days after I extended it to the end of the season, Brentford called me back. And then I started playing for Brentford then. What was it like at Portsmouth though? Because that's a, that's a club, isn't it? Very good. They've got massive fan base. Like the atmosphere in and around the ground. And it's a club that should be in championship or even premiership. So I really enjoyed it. And I was way to stay there till the end of the season because I was enjoying myself but then I ended up going back and getting promoted with Brentford so it was bit sweet really Do you know what changed their mind? I don't know maybe how the team was playing maybe how I was playing on loan at Portsmouth it was probably a mixture of the two Brentford are in League 1 at this stage Yeah doing 
quite well. I think we was about third at the time. And when was it you won your awards with Brentford? That was in a championship. It was the year after. What was it that went so well for you that season? I think we had a really good team. The style of play that suited me and I just I was just enjoying my football. We played with a lot of freedom and love attacking football and everything seemed to click. I think anyone could have won player of the year that year. Our whole team was performing week in, week out. We was really good. Had we not played Middlesbrough in the playoff that year, I believe we would have got promoted. They were the only team in the league who we couldn't beat for some reason. They were our sort of buggy team. We were two very different teams. It was really attack-minded and they were really solid. Playing on a counter-attack, not giving anything away. And we lost 1-0 and 1-0 both games in the league. Having most of the possession, most of the chances, but we just couldn't beat them. It was a, it was a strange one, but... If you want to be promoted, you have to be everyone, I suppose. Yeah, it's got to go right for you at the right time, hasn't it? Yeah, exactly. Right, well, we'll, we'll move on to some more questions because uh, that sort of comes to the end of your Brentford period. So we're going to go to Instagram now. We've got uh, Ethan Willett here. Uh, Favourite game you've played in? Uh, I'll probably say Brentford all way to Fulham. Beat them 4-1 at their place, being a West London derby. I think that was one of the best games I've played in. <laughs> We've got the Sam Sutcliffe here. Good day to Marnie. Just a quick one, mate. What's your favourite meal? I like a lasagna. That's one of my favourite ones. That'll do. <laughs> uh, do you prefer playing as a holding midfielder or a balance midfielder? That's from Jay Riggs. That's a good, good question, that one. It, it depends. I, I kind of like, I don't mind playing both. My better seasons was at Brentford playing old in midfielder. But lately I've been playing more as a balanced midfielder and I really enjoy that as well. So I have to say both. We've got one from Carlos Mendes Gomez here. Tell us about the FIFA tournaments on the away days. I was unlucky in them. I've I've lost a couple, I've lost a few of them. Well, most of them. But I've been practicing, so when the season gets back on on track, I w- I'm sure I'll win a few. We do like a league. It's a league, so you play each other twice, and most of the time I end up finishing bottom. But then I've got kids at home. Most of them don't have kids at home, so they've they've got more time to practice and all that sort of stuff. That's my excuse. Nah, it's a good excuse, that seems. <laughs> How does that work, then? Who do you room with on away trips? Uh, I'm with Louis. I'm with Jordan and Slew. But we always play in Carlos's room. He brings his PlayStation. Okay. So there's about six, seven of us playing. What's your team? Who do you play with? I've played with Real Madrid. Didn't go too well. Oh, I use Barcelona. All right, we've got one from Matty24. Favourite club you've played for? For, the, for a diplomatic answer here, we'll say that you're not allowed to say Morecambe. You've got to, you've got to choose someone else. Brentford. Just one? Yeah. Brentford. Okay. Vinny Sanchez wants to know, should he sign Wayne Rooney in his career mode? Yeah. I don't see why now. He's a great player. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot asking if you're going to be at Morecambe next season, but you know, let's just uh, stay away from things like that. Yeah. Um, favorite song that you've ever had? It's from Connor Dale. I used to have a few at Brentford that were quite good. Uh, but I can't remember exactly the whole song. Uh, it's okay. I won't make you sing them. All right. Uh, good questions. Thanks for the questions, guys. So we'll we'll move on. Next, you come into your time at Leeds. Now that yeah. must have been a big thing for you when Leeds come in for you. Yeah, that was. I didn't expect it because I was close to joining Glasgow Rangers at the time. I was extremely close. Would you say that you had to choose between them? No. I had chose. I would have gone Glasgow Rangers. That was my... That's where I wanted to go. That was... In the end, it wasn't a choice. So you, you went to Leeds? Yeah. I had no problem with it. still a massive club and, you know, I was only to play for them. So when was that when you signed? I signed in January, was it 2015, with Steve Evans. Gary Monk didn't take over till the summer. 
and you get straight in the team? Yeah, the first game was Brentford away. I came on with half an hour to go, but then after that, I was straight in the team. You know, scored on my debut. Everything was very good for me under Steve Evans. Was it hard, though, to leave Brentford? Because it sounds like you're having yeah. an enjoyable time there. Yeah, really hard. And it's one of them, if I could do it all again, I probably wouldn't have left. But there was a lot of things happening and, you know, it just, it's one of them. Was it a good choice looking back at it? Maybe not. But at the time, I felt like I had no choice, pretty much. I mean, that must have made it even harder. Your first game, four leads, is against Brentford. Yeah. That must have been weird. That was extremely weird. But, you know, it was 1-1, one, one, so everyone was happy. But it was weird, and it was good at the same time to get back to Griffin Park. How, how did you find it at Ellen Road, though? Very good. When the team's doing well and the crowd's behind you, I don't think there's any away team who wants to come to Ellen Road. It can really be a fortress. So I've really enjoyed my first six months there. And prior to that, you've been living in London? Yeah. So you moved up to Yorkshire? Yeah, Mrs and the kids, everyone came up to Yorkshire and we're still here now. So it went well for you under Steve Evans and you got to the end of that season? Yeah. Going into the following season, that's when Gary Monk came in? Yeah. Did it continue to go okay for you? Nope. Oh. (laughs) Pre-season was was okay-ish, I would say. But I played centre-back most of the the games in pre-season. Why was that? We didn't have enough centre-backs, I think. There was only two or three. And you know, when everyone plays 45 minutes, my 45 minutes were at the back. I don't think you can show your true potential if you're not playing out your position. It sounds like they've just used you to plug a few gaps, doesn't it? Yeah, but then the first league game, I ended up playing in midfield. Right, so you did at least play in the league? The first one. Just the first one? Yeah. <laughs> right. Played the first one away to keep out. We lost 3-0. And then that was it. There was no... The door was shut after that. Right. So there was no going back in anywhere. I was training with the under-18s. Do, do you feel like you had a particularly bad game that day? or? I don't think I had a good game, no. But then we lost 3-0, so I don't think many of us had a good game. And I believe you should... You can't judge players on one game the same way you can't judge a manager if they lose the first game. I didn't expect to play the first game of the season, so it was it was a bit of a shock to me as well. But maybe it would have been better had I not start the first game. I don't. I was just one of them. We'll never know. It was a bit harsh, but nothing you can do about it. Unfortunately. When was it you got your loan to Ipswich? That was in January. Right, so you've gone, you've gone half the season, sat around at Leeds, have you? Yeah. That must have been hard for you. You've left Brentford where you're having a good time and then you're, you're in exile. Yeah, that's, that was tough mentally. But I did everything I could to just try and stay fit, try and stay positive and bounce back in January. And you got your loan. Was it always going to be up switch or did you have any other options? I had a couple of options. But I felt like Ipswich was the right choice at the time. And was it? Yeah, I enjoyed my time down there. You know, working with Mick McCarthy. I really enjoyed it. So I got injured, I think it was two or three games before the end of the season. So I had to come back to Leeds. But for the time I was there, it was an enjoyable experience. What about the family, though? I mean, you've, you've gone back down to Ipswich. That's a long way from where you're living. Yeah, that was... The tough part. Did they come with you or...? No, no. The the kids are at school and everything. So with me just being on loan for six months, they had to stay where they were and I was just coming back once a week. But after that you went to Plymouth. So did they have they always stayed in Yorkshire since you signed for Leeds? Yeah. That must have been hard. Yeah, it is. That's why when you've asked me the question about why did I go to Morecambe, I feel like I've done them long journeys to Ipswich, to Plymouth, and I'm at a stage now where it's all about family. So I'd rather go to the closest club and the better club for me 
rather than the bigger club two or three hours away. Yeah, absolutely. So you you went back to Leeds and then got moved to Plymouth? Yeah. Was it Derek Adams that signed you? Yeah, it was Derek Adams, yeah. So how did that come about? Because that, that's quite a uh, long way to go. Yeah. Well, I've had, I left Leeds and I didn't have a team. I didn't have a club for about two months, two and a half months. Did, did Brentford not fancy taking you back? Uh, I don't know. I never tried, I suppose. Oh, well. So you ended up at, at Plymouth? Yeah. And how was that? Very good. Uh, he was extremely good at Plymouth. I really enjoyed it. This is Plymouth's first season in League One? Yeah. Because they were bottom of the league when I went there. But we quickly climbed off the table and you know, it was... Very good city, very good club. Everything was great. The only minor was the location. And I just had a baby girl in a September. So that's what kind of pushed me like, to come back up north. But had it not been for the location, I would still be there now. You got moved back north to Fleetwood, did you? Yeah. And how, how did that go? Not as good as... I would have wanted to. I don't think I performed as well as I did at Plymouth, you know, fairness. So I think some of it has to be on me. I was there probably eight, nine months. And when the manager changed, once again, Jay Barton came in, didn't fancy me. It seems that, it, it, that happens to you quite a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, I always laugh about it with my missus and say, I've got a new manager's curse. So you went you went to Swindon? Yeah. Everything was... I was playing well. I was enjoying my football. And I got injured last season, which I was out for five months. And then, once again, a new manager came in. And that was the end of that, really. Got told I could leave in the summer. And then I ended up staying the first six months and coming to Morecambe. That was in the summer at the end of last season? Yeah. So what were you doing for the period between the summer and signing for us? Training. Trying as much as possible. Because I had offers, but they were down south. I didn't want to go down south again. When uh, when you saw Derek Adams get the Morecambe job, did your did your eyes light up? I didn't I did see it first. I've only, I've realised probably three probably two, three weeks after he took over, my agent rang me and said, what would you like with Derek Adams? I was like, oh, yeah, very good. He said, oh, is that Morecambe? I was like, oh, I didn't know. So I've literally missed him going to Morecambe, but it's worked out well in the end. He just he just said to me to come down for a week and see what we can do after that. Yeah, so it was a bit of a no-brainer for you. Yeah. Driving over down the 65 doesn't seem so bad now either, does it, after that story? Exactly. Yeah. So you've, uh, you started, uh, you came in for the Colchester game. Yeah. And it's going well for you. Yeah. I think we haven't lost at home and I think we've been doing quite well ever since January. You know, I wasn't there before, but from what I've seen since January... You know, I think we're doing extremely well, considering where we was in the league and everything. It must be quite a shame for you, isn't it, that all this lockdown's happened and the league's been postponed for however long, because, you know, you've waited for quite a while to get playing again. Yeah, it is, but at the same time, health is more important than football. As, as much as I want to get back playing football, you know, the health of everyone around the world is more important and I'm sure once that gets sorted we'll be back playing in no time Okay, well thanks a lot for speaking to us Toombs No problem I'm sorry for taking so long out of your day I I was meant to go out for a walk around 11 (laughs) I'll have to go now the the weather's not great as well it's probably going to rain Okay, well sorry about that I know who to blame if the kids can't go out for a walk today. <laughs> okay, send me the dry cleaning. I will do. Right, well, thanks a lot. I'll uh, I'll see you soon when we're back in. All right, no problem. Stay safe. Thanks, teams. Mm-hmm.